Hello teachers from all over the world. My name is Tanya from TaniaTeacherTraining.com and today we will be talking about how to prepare your students for an international exam, part three, speaking. If this is your first time here, teacher, I would like to say welcome and thanks for being here. Don't forget to subscribe and click on the little bell so you don't miss on anything. This channel is for you. Teachers, remember that this is a four-part series of videos. We've already covered reading and writing. Today, we are talking about speaking and next week, listening. All right? And at the end of this video, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. So, shh, stay until the end. What do you say we start? And here we are, teachers. How to prepare your students for an international exam, speaking. These are some points that I would like you to consider when preparing your students for speaking. First of all, this can be the most terrifying part of the test for some candidates. How do you avoid that? Through practice. Practice with your classmates, practice with you, practice with other teachers from other classes. Invite teachers. Now that we are in a virtual environment, you can invite a teacher for maybe 10, 15 minutes to participate in your class so your students can talk to that teacher or another person, a special guest. The more times they do this, the better prepared they will be to face um, a person they don't know they have to talk to. Okay, that's my first suggestion. Now, topics. What topics are going to be covered in their test? It depends on their level. If they are A1 or A2, just think about the topics, familiar topics. Family, friends, hobbies, sports, animals. If they are level B1, probably technology, websites, things that are relevant nowadays. B2 up things that are more abstract, such as happiness, tolerance, um, I don't know, dealing with unexpected things, things like that, okay? Now, range of vocabulary. If we talk about an A2, how many animals can your students name? How many sports? How many daily activities? How many leisure activities? You go topic by topic and make sure that they have a wide range of vocabulary words, okay? Now, the format of the test. Will they have a long term? Will they have to discuss and uh, do some decision making? What are they going to be doing in the test? If you want to find out, it depends on the test, obviously. Tests such as IELTS or Cambridge or TOEFL, it depends on the test. There are many videos on YouTube about each and all of these tests that I mentioned, okay? So you just check out the, the real test or the practice test so you know the format, okay? Now, connectors. If a candidate uses and, so, and because, for me, that's a beginner. If I want to prove that I have a better level of English, I need to be using connectors such as however, in spite of, for instance, as a consequence, things like that. So work on connectors with your students. Now, pronunciation. Obviously, because this is a speaking exam, we are going to be checking pronunciation. What about it? Word stress, sentence stress, intonation. Is it rising intonation or falling intonation? Are they asking a question? That is rising intonation. What kind of question are they asking? That's falling intonation. Or what about pausing when they are listing things? I like basketball, football, rugby, cricket. So I need to make a pause every time I say a different item right? So I need to be able to use that pause and to show the speaking examiner I know how to use the pause. So intonation. 
uh, sentence stress, word stress, and fluency. The features of connected speech. Do they know how to use contractions? Contractions are allowed during the test. Contractions and linking, for example, putting words together, making their speech look like with an appropriate rhythm and fluency. All right? Now, grammar range and accuracy. Do they use consistently present simple? past simple, future. Are they using complex sentences? For example, if I were you, I wouldn't do that. They are putting together two sentences. Or the use of modality. Are they using all the time can? Can they use can, must, should, must? Do they know um, conditionals? Things like that show me that the candidate has another level of English. I mean, modality, check. Complex sentences, check. Or if they are in a lower level, if they can work with uh, present simple, past simple, and will, that's okay. All right? And timing. Timing is basic. You need to know how long the test lasts. For example, in IELTS, they have a long term that lasts for two minutes. In B1, Cambridge test, they need to describe a picture for one minute. So what you're going to be doing here in order to practice is time your students. Okay, you have one minute to describe the place where you live. Off you go. All right, and after a while, after practice through practice, after practice, they will get this feeling of how much they can say in one minute or two minutes. I want them to have that, that feeling, that sensation of, okay, it's already two minutes, because that will mean that they are better prepared for the test. And now, in the last part of the preparation, let's check out some functions. You need to practice functions with your, with your students. What is a function? A function is a reason for speaking, like greeting, saying goodbye, requesting, asking for extra information. Those are examples of functions. What functions do they need to work with for, for these exams? What about answering personal questions? This kind of tests always include that part. Why? Because Candidates are warming up, they need to feel more comfortable with, uh, with the speaking examiner or speaking examiners. So they need to be able to answer personal questions and you need to prepare them with the right tools. That means with the right phrases, introductory phrases, such as, I like, I enjoy, I hate, I dislike, and then they can explain what they like or dislike, but they need to have or handle these phrases. Okay, what about expressing daily activities? I sometimes, I rarely, I hardly ever, I do this every day, all right? Or what about talking about their family or friends? My family is, my family goes to uh, this uh, place every weekend. We enjoy doing this, this and that. All those are the, the phrases that they need for this function of answering personal questions. Now, if they need to do a long term, they will probably have to express their viewpoint or give, reason, give reasons about something. For example, they can use, I think, I consider, I believe, and not, I think, I think, I think all the time, because remember, the range of vocabulary. If they are expressing an opposing view or contrasting views, they can say, well, on the other hand, I also think that, prepare them with these phrases. For instance, when they give reasons, uh, I mean, when they give examples. For instance, my friend told me, dun, dun, dun. okay? Or when we, they need to conclude, Finally, we decided to do this or do that, okay? And the last one, 
when they need to do a conversation, a discussion, or reach a decision together with a partner during the test. Okay? You need to prepare them to state their opinion, to agree or disagree, to interrupt. It's valid. If they are reaching a decision, think about a normal conversation. We interrupt sometimes. We ask for the other person's opinion. So our students need to be prepared for that. That is a normal conversation. And it's also valid to ask a question if you didn't understand the examiner well. That is going to give them points as well, okay? For example, if I have to disagree, I, I can say, well, I disagree with you. I don't agree. How many students have you heard saying, I am agree? I am not agree. That is a common mistake. So you need to eradicate this. Uh, if you want to interrupt, may I say something? Let me move myself here. Thank you. Okay. Or if you are asking for somebody else's opinion, what do you think about this? What do you say if? Finally, when you reach a decision, you can say, well, we chose uh, this present from the picture because we think such and such. All right. So teachers, these are the functions that normally you need to prepare your students for. All right. Don't forget all the things I told you. Work on timing, work on format, work on pronunciation, grammar range, vocabulary range. Okay. All those things will help your students have a successful test. And finally, the secret I was going to tell you. It's how do I know all these things? How do I know that this is going to work? Because I have been a speaking examiner and a team leader for a while now, talking about international exams. All right, so I know what speaking examiners are looking for. Trust me, do all these things and your students will be very successful. And this will be all for today, teachers. Don't forget to write in the comments all your questions. This channel is for you. I want to know what you think about these videos. I want to know what is relevant for your teaching, what you need to know about. Okay, so please don't hesitate. Send me all your comments. Thank you very much for being here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Okay, bye.